We don't have any children here this morning, but uh, there may be some children out there watching today, knowing that we might have an object lesson or a, a lamb service. Last Sunday I did a card illustration. That's uh, usually thought of as close-up magic, but I hope that we were able to zoom in a little bit. If nothing else, if the cards were not completely or perfectly visible, maybe the lesson was. So I hope the same for today. I'm going to be preaching today from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, where Jesus, uh, in, a, in sharing some final words with his disciples before he goes to the cross, to, speaking to them about God and himself. He says in John 14, 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And as he continues to talk about God and about himself, his disciples are emboldened to ask some questions. And uh, one of his disciples said, well, we'd, we'd like to see God. And so I believe that those disciples, they were just quite ordinary men. And they came from a variety of different backgrounds. They were fishermen. Uh, they were of, of, of one political bent or another. They were businessmen. They were men who had families. Some of them were very young and probably hadn't started their families yet. I believe that, God, that John himself was, was very young. But I do believe that what attracted them to Jesus and one reason that they felt compelled to Jesus was that they were spiritual men. They, they had uh, and already had what you would say a spiritual bent. Now, there was a time in my life as a young preacher when I thought that that everybody was religious, whether they would admit it or not. And that deep in their hearts, that everybody really, truly believed in God, whether they were willing to admit it or not. There's the old sentiment, you know, that there are no atheists in foxholes. In other words, a person may declare his disbelief in God, or his belief that there is no God, and that when he winds up in a foxhole somewhere on a battlefield, he changes his mind. Well, that... That may or may not be true. I think that there are many atheists who have not cried out to God in their last moment of life. A little bit of depth of thought for a lamb service or a children's lesson. But I believe these men were searching for God and they felt that the best chance that they would ever have of knowing God and seeing God was in this man, Jesus. Now, I do have some cards. There's a, a, the nine of clubs. Can you see that? It's one of the cards. There are 52 cards in this deck. And as I cut the cards, there's the ten of diamonds. And I uh, cut the cards again. There's the ace of spades. Cut the cards again. The uh, nine of clubs. The uh, four of diamonds. I'm dropping them as I go. I'm going to go ahead and retrieve that one just to prove to you that I can bend over, stoop, or get it. Sometimes, uh, you know, it used to be when I dropped a quarter, I would dash after it. Now, I won't sleep over for anything less than a $5 bill. Queen of Diamonds, Ace of Hearts, all the different cards. As you can see them here, let me see if I can display them for you. I'm just going to let them fall. You can see a mixture of red and black cards, Seven of Clubs, Ace of Spades, Jack of Diamonds, Ten of clubs. The disciples were right to look for God in and through Jesus. And a lot of times it depends on what we're looking for or what we're willing to see. Let me show you something. There's, this is, a, of course, a very special deck of cards. And in this you can see is the... Uh, the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Clubs, uh, the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Clubs there. And wherever I cut the cards, if I take them right here and cut them there, there's another Ace of Clubs. If I cut close to the top like this, there's the Ace of Clubs. If I cut close to the top with just a few cards, there's the Ace of Clubs. Wherever I cut the cards, and so there is a point to this trick that right now, all we can see when we're looking at these cards are the Ace of Clubs. It 
Since the Lord Jesus became my Lord and Savior, it has become that wherever I look, whatever I see, when I look at a sunset, when I look at a sunrise, when I look at snow or rain, I can see, I can see Jesus everywhere. He's in everything now for me. Wherever I cut the cards in my life, He is there. I've realized all along that He's always been there. But I don't know what you're looking for, or what you're searching for, or what you think it might be important to find. But I can tell you very clearly that what the disciples were looking for, they had truly found in Christ. They really didn't even realize all that they had found or discovered. That's the point of my message today. But whatever you think you're looking for, are you looking for a good job, looking for wealth, fame? Are you looking for a husband or a wife? Or are, you, are you looking for friendship? Oh, what are you searching for? Happiness? If you'll look in Christ, you'll find all the things that you, maybe not everything you want, but everything you need. And I, have, I can tell you by my own testimony, I have found many of the things that my heart desired. So, I don't know what you're seeing right now or what you're looking for, but I do pray that whatever you're seeing, yeah, look, look to Jesus. I, that's why I wanted us to sing that, turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's my thought today. Thank you. Brother Danny, come to continue to lead us as we sing.